that are manufactured right on site. Centrally located in Ontario, you can stop by and pick up the parts you need or they'll ship them nationwide. Whether you race dirt or asphalt, they even carry parts for road course cars. 226-583-8001. And keep an eye on GSR Parts Facebook page. If it happened on the track, you'll hear it on Race Time Radio. Stay up to date on all your Canadian racing news and highlights each Sunday night right here on Race Time Radio. We'll feature the sport's biggest stars and rising talent from here at home and across North America. It's all live, coast to coast. Sundays at 5 p.m. Eastern. Good job, driver. Good job. Tonight's Race Time Radio is brought to you by RPM Race Parks. Order today. Race tomorrow. Also by VP Race Fuels, the worldwide leader in race fuel technology. Dawson Dental Centers, get your victory lane smile at DawsonDental.ca. And by Mr. Transmission, Owen Sound. Hey, Mr. Hi, man, you're ready to go. Welcome to Race Time Radio. You'll hear from the best in Canadian U.S. racing this week. Grab a cold one and stick around. Uh, you're good. they got a car in the wall. The starter tower has signals. We're ready to roll. It's Race Time Radio, and it starts right now. Here's your host, Joe Chisholm. Keep it in the time room. And good evening, one and all. Welcome to Race Time Radio, your two-hour edition, coast to coast, right here on Rev TV Canada, and of course across the full Race Time Radio network, including the Performance Motorsport Network.com, and of course our YouTube channel, all live. And uh, please do us a favor, hit subscribe as you're on our YouTube channel now. We surely appreciate it. Things are growing. Uh, they're growing, and it's all because of you, and thank you for all of that. Let me tell you who we've got coming on the show tonight. Talk about a stacked, stellar lineup. We got it for you here tonight. We're going to start out, out, way out on the east coast of Canada. In true Nova Scotia, to be uh, quite pinpoint about things, we have got Canada's Iron Man, Gary Elliott. Yep, the driver of this number 36 beautiful machine right in front of me. Gary Elliott is going to join us on the show for yet another edition. This guy is, like, just amazing. If you've never met Gary Elliott, tonight you're in for a treat. I'll tell you what. I've not only watched this driver, I've actually made money on this guy sitting in the grandstand at Sobel Speedway 25 years ago when Gary was driving uh, a, a Canadian vintage modified, beautiful Quaker State machine, uh, sitting with a bunch of friends. And, of course, we did a little bit of uh, play betting. Uh, throw two bucks, uh, put it in the pool, take your car, live with the results, and if you pick the winner, you got the coin. And uh, sure enough, I knew my racing, and I knew my buddy Gary Elliott was going to roll out down at the track. I want to say he started that night around 12th, they all laughed at me. He said, no way is that guy going to win the race. He started way back. I said, you just watch my buddy. And sure enough, Gary Elliott, doom, 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 all the way through the field, 10 to go. Gary was set and sail out front. Even his son David couldn't catch him. Uh, it was incredible to watch. And he has been an incredible individual. You're going to meet him tonight, all live on Race Time Radio. We'll catch up tonight with Kyle Speckley. Of course, Kyle was in action Last weekend, he wasn't in the 30 car for Red Jones, not last weekend. He was in his APC number 22 car. He was in the Cars Tour Pro Late Model division. And, uh, man, he qualified seventh, doing a real good job. And consequently, uh, the 43 car didn't leave him a lot of room. Ended up hitting the 22, turned him around, uh, <laughs> cut a tire down, had some damage underneath, and the crew went to work, got Kyle back out. He did salvage a top 10 finish. Uh, we were going to try and get him last week, but they were in transit, of course, on their way home from Hickory. And uh, Kyle said, hey, I'll join you next week for sure. Uh, signal was spotty last week. So we're going to catch up with Kyle Steckley here on the show. Hey, some big news on dirt here in the province of Ontario. It was kind of looking like Ontario Motor Speedway 
uh, the, the old South Buxton Speedway. Um, it, it looked like, uh, you know, the track was all rebuilt and uh, brought up the grade, and uh, they did some miraculous stuff, but then the track was going to end up shutting down. Uh, there was something going on, don't know why, uh, but nevertheless, that big, beautiful speedway was going to fall off the map until the Marx family took over, and the deal got concreted just the other day. Will Marx is going to join the show. Uh, his dad, his brother, uh, there's a whole collection of them, but Will is going to join the show tonight. We'll dig into Ontario Motor Speedway, and we'll get the skinny on everything. What we can look forward to throughout the course of 2024, now that that big, beautiful speedway is going to be cracked open again, and uh, new blood going to be a good thing. Uh, we'll also catch up, and we'll talk some NASCAR Canada. How about with a, uh, a, a guy that not only has 100 starts, in NASCAR Canada, he's got a bunch of wins. I want to say 18, but we'll dig into Kevin Lacroix's stats in just a bit. He drives the number 74 Napa Stores machine, and uh, Kevin Lacroix from Quebec going to join us here tonight on the show. And how about the wonderful world of live streaming races? Man, I'll tell you, the landscape has changed over the last four or five years, and it's really intensified. There is a ton of content out there. The problem kind of is that no one knows where to look and when to look for it. Uh, some of them are pay channels. Some of them aren't. Uh, sometimes you are a subscriber and you don't get uh, this event or that event. I thought a perfect guy to talk to, a veteran in this, a guy that has supplied race fans with content for years. His name is Tony Stevens. He is Pit Row TV, not Pit Road, Pit Row, R-O-W, Pit Row TV. Uh, any short track fan that's been around any length of time has probably tuned into Pit Row TV. And Tony Stevens is a wealth of knowledge. He is going to join the show. He's out in Vegas this weekend. Busy guy, always on a track, always doing something. But Tony has agreed to jump on and uh, help us pick our way through and, uh, you know, find out some of the answers uh, to some of the questions that we all would have. Uh, Tony Stevens going to do that. But what do you say we get to the birthday boy himself? Yeah, tonight is Gary Elliott's birthday. He drives the number 36 in the Parts for Trucks Tour. Whoops, sorry. East Coast International Pro Stock Tour. Old guy, old habits. A uh, great sponsor, I might add, and so is East Coast International. It is the Pro Stock Tour on Canada's East Coast in the Maritimes. The 36 Quaker State Machine is lined up and ready to go once again in 2024. And uh, we're going to bring him up. As soon as Gary gets his butt back into the chair, we'll get him on the show. And there he is. We got him. Oh, don't touch that camera. Gary, what's going on? How you doing, bud? Hey, I'm doing good. Hang on one sec. Okay, I'm hanging on one second. You there guys, we go. Yeah, it's working fine. Gary, looks like you got things ready to rock and roll again for another season. This, over 50 years now, Gary. Yeah, 56 this year. Amazing. So I'm pretty excited. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't doubt it. Man, uh, you got the car all ready to go. Is it uh, race ready, so to speak? You're ready to do some testing? Yeah, I would say uh, another half an hour, maybe maybe a couple hours max. Uh, we want to test the radios, and um, we've already scaled the car. We've already set up the chassis and uh, wheelbase, and all that stuff is already done. Trailing arm angles, we've we've done all that. We we just have to do a few more things, nothing serious, but just want to make sure that the radios work, and. Uh, and then we can go practice. So we're ready to go. It's, I'm pretty excited. I wouldn't doubt it. Gary, you have been working on that car since the day you guys shut down 2023. I know you have. Uh, yeah. It's rate full off restoration each and every season. How is the 36th this year? And did you find much stuff wrong with it uh, from, you know, maybe wrecks that took place last year? Well, actually, uh, we went to Ontario for the last um uh, two races of my, my schedule. And uh, at Flamborough, we broke a drive shaft 
And I didn't understand why, because it broke right at the yoke. So we didn't have a spare. So I borrowed one actually from Kyle Steckley. So I, I really appreciate that. His dad was so gracious to me. So he ended up giving it to me and then I bought it off him, which, which was great. So we go to Peterborough and I, I had no idea why that the rear the drive shaft broke. So when I, we go to Peterborough, uh, I'm actually running really well. I'm, I'm positive. I have a great attitude because I love that track. I love Flamborough too. I don't think there's any tracks I don't love. I really <laughs> like, but there's some I, I seem to feel more on the wheel than I do others. So anyway, uh, we're, we're, it got rained out. We come back Saturday morning. We were seventh fastest in practice at Peterborough, which is which is really good for for anybody, but it's really good for me. Right. And uh, so we spun out twice in the feature, and I didn't understand why. And the second time we spun out, my crew said there's a lot of oil dripping from the rear end. So we were done, and it turned out that we broke the quick change, and that's why the drive shaft went at Flamborough. No. So anyway, we had to rebuild the quick uh, the rear end. We had to put new master cylinders in it. We've uh, everything that had to be replaced is replaced, and um, yeah, so it was a lot of work. We started October twenty eighth, <laughs> and then because I told the guys, let's get some stuff done before it starts to get cold and right. snow. And uh, my crew are really good. Like Chris, Chris uh, White comes all the way from Dartmouth, and Jack he lives in North River. He's not too far away, fifteen minutes. Bob lives in uh, uh, New Glasgow, and uh, of course Shannon, she's she's close by. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, we uh, and I just picked up two new crew, uh, Robert and then his daughter Emily. So now they've helped. Actually, they they started helping after we were already pretty well done. But they they they've been digging in as well. Oh, that's awesome, Gary. When it comes time for statistics, the numbers that you have produced over 56 years in the sport are truly mind-bending. How about this? A hundred, or pardon me, a thousand three hundred and thirty-three nights is what you have raced. 890 of them are consecutive nights. Gary, that's unheard of. Uh, you know what? I... I didn't know how many nights that we had consecutive until 2013. It was our 40th year with Quaker State. So I was just getting some stats done so I could do a, a book and I wanted to put my stats in the book. So when I seen we were at 680 in a row, I thought, wow, like that's, I didn't realize there was that, that many. So by the end of uh, 2013, we hit 700. And then in 2017, we hit 800 at the last race at ACC at Peterborough. So I was, I was pretty pumped. And then, so then COVID hit and I couldn't run as many nights, but I ran eight in 2020, 11 in 2021. Then I started then 14 in 2022, then 15 and, and, and last year, 15 and 16 actually in 2022, because I went to Ontario yeah. and uh, yeah. So now we're at 890 consecutive and 1333. The other stat that I didn't know was how many races I've been in, but I can't show you now, but uh, I have a bunch of scrapbooks back there, <laughs> and they all—they're all documented. They're all—they all have all the numbers, all the where I finished. I know where all my finishes. So I can't tell you how many DNFs I have and how many <laughs> I could. I haven't recorded, right? But I know how many races we've won, how many features we've won, and all our point stains. Actually, that's on my website. If you go to my website. Uh, Gary Elliott Motorsports.com in the top left corner is all my stats from 55 years. So actually, they're all there if somebody wanted to go and check that out. Yeah, oh, just amazing. We're with Gary Elliott tonight. He's in Truro, Nova Scotia, it's where he lives now. Uh, Gary lived in Ontario for a long, long time, moved out to Canada's East Coast, and that's where he is now. Gary, there's not a racetrack in Ontario for sure that you haven't raced on. I'm trying to think now, uh, w when you get to the Maritimes, I think you've got every one of the Maritime provinces covered, every one of their tracks. I know seeing you at Eastbound International Speedway out in Newfoundland, so you've got yeah. that covered off. How far west do you go? Have you gone any, uh, done any racing west of Ontario? No, not really. I, uh, I did south. I've, I've got probably seven or eight in the U S that I've raced. 
and uh, back with the hobby cars because I was the first, when I was president in 1985, in 84, we came to Nova Scotia with the hobby cars. There were 16 of us that came to Nova Scotia and we ran Riverside, uh, Hammond River and River Glade. And before we went, we went to Maine, first we ran a, a Rooster County Speedway, which I believe is called Spud Speedway now. Yeah. So we did that one and then we did uh, Riverside and then we went to River Glade and that was 1984. So just to interrupt myself, I'm pretty excited that I'm gonna go back to River Glade for their 60th anniversary. And it'll be my 40th anniversary since the last time I raced there. So uh, yeah, we, uh, then in 1985, uh, I decided, I, I asked the guys, you know, because I mean, that's a lot to ask people to go. Imagine for two weeks, we left Ontario. Right. On the night before that we left, Flambro Speedway had all that we all went around the track. We come out of the pit gate and we drove around. John Caselli shook hands with us and Quaker say, give everybody a case of oil. Wow. And then we headed to the Maritimes after our Saturday night race. And um, it was it was fantastic. Like it was really good. So then in 1985, I said to the guys, well, look, if we went to the Maritimes, surely we can go to Michigan. <laughs> so then we went down to Michigan for the first time. Kalamazoo was the first track. We went to Kalamazoo for 14 years after that. Yeah. And Berlin, Kalamazoo, uh, M140. Uh, uh, there was uh, Galesburg Speedway. Uh, there was a few more, too, that we, we ran that were really exciting. Oh, Spartan, Spartan Speedway. <laughs> and uh, Dearborn, just past Dearborn, we ran Dixie Speedway. So it was awesome. Also a member of the Canadian Motorsports Hall of Fame, Gary Elliott was inducted. What year was that? That was at 18 or 19? No, last year. Was it last year? See yeah, that? in 2000, uh, 1997, I was inducted into the Vintage Modified Hall of Fame. Right. Then in 2016, Flamborough Speedway. And then in 2022 or 23, uh, I was inducted into the Canadian Motorsports Hall of Fame. Well, Absolutely blew me away because, uh, like, I'm not, I'm not a guy to beat. Uh, I never really was. I just, I happened to have a, a nice spell probably from about 1987 to 2014 that I was always a car that that I could win. Right. And when people ask me, like they say, "Are you going to win tonight?" and I said, "I don't know, but I'm going to race." And yeah. that's what I that's what I do. And and now I'm having probably, I'm not that I didn't have fun before, but I never got mad when I finished second ever. I never nobody anybody who ever made out that stupid phrase second sucks right. is ridiculous. Like, imagine starting fifteenth and you finish second. Yeah, how can that suck? Yeah, that's ridiculous to make that statement. And people are just stupid because, well, they're not stupid. They're just wrong for saying. I mean, twenty four cars on the track, and you finish second. And you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. The only time you might be disappointed is if you're leading and the guy hits you from behind to pass you. That would make you upset because I, rubbing is racing, but hammering a guy from the back to me is not. That's not rubbing. That's no. smashing yeah, into it a is. guy. It, it's... When two cars are side by side for the final lap, holy cow, nothing's more exciting. And that's rubbing. They'll rub because they have to hug each other so they can have their lane. But that's rubbing, and that's okay. But banging into a guy, but my point is, is that if you finish on the podium, then that's that's a really good night. But I'll tell you something: in Flamborough Speedway and the hobby cars, we always started the fast cars at the back. Mm -hmm. And many times, when I like when I was running high in the points in the 80s and the 90s, I would start like 21st or or 20th. Oh yeah, a 25 lap race, 25 lap feature. And so if we finished fifth, if you walked by our trailer, you would have thought we won. Yeah, we were high fiving each other, hugging each other, and because <laughs> I love racing. And to me, if you, you know, you got to count your victories in a night of racing. And if you finish in the top three, if you finish second, man, that's a home run, buddy. You finished first a bunch because I got the cash to prove it. Uh, when I would take <laughs> the thirty six, uh, it was always something special. Gary, look back at two thousand and twenty three. Any special moments to you when you look back on the season? Uh, I can imagine there's lots that stick out through your 56 years this year in racing, but last year's or anything that pops out to go, man, that was cool. Yeah. You know what? There's a few, like, for example, when I came down here in 2020, 
Scotia Speedworld wasn't running because of COVID, but they did in 2021. My fastest lap time there was a 14.539, and I never beat that in 2022. And then the last night race of the year in 2023, we went out and we did a 14.582. And my 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 uh, spotter Jack said, Do you, "How's the car feel?" I said, "Good." He said, "So then we're good, right?" I said, "No, I want to go out again." <laughs> he said, "What do you mean?" I said, "Well, I want to try to beat 14.539. I think I can." See, I don't drive on the wheel like i don't do that right not especially for 150 laps i did in the hobby car because you had no no time right. you had to hustle but now like it's a 150 lap race you don't need to be driving like a nutcase like you just have to go out yeah. there and just pace yourself so anyway and at my age you have to pace yourself anyway <laughs> anyway so oh my goodness i go back out on this last set of hot laps and now i am like back in the hobby days i only was going to run five laps so Jack says to me, you just did it. You just beat 14,539. I said, wow. So I come in, and Shannon goes over with the telephone with that uh, race pass on it. Right. She said, check this at 14,500. And I thought, holy cow, I beat it by almost a half a second. Yeah. Like four tenths. So that was one. But another one that was probably just as good and maybe even more so was when I left after we raced at uh, the IWK 250. The next week, I raced the next week at uh, with the SLM series. Right. And I raced at uh, one of my favorite tracks down here is uh, Oyster Bed. And holy cow. So we got there. There was 26 cars. Now, the thing is, I took bump stops out of my car. Right. I took them out early last year because I couldn't get the car to work. I didn't have a gale force machine. And I, I hated asking people to help me with my stuff. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? I talked to Junior Hanley and I said, I, I, I want to take the bump stops out. And he never he never said no. Yeah. He said, you know what? He said that they are tricky and it cost, they cost a lot of extra money right. with shocks and all the other stuff people are trying to do. I know people are trying to go two tenths faster, but you know what? They're, they're, they don't need to. So anyway, I took them out and I put heavier springs in the car and and I finished that the weekend before I finished on the lead lap at Riverside like that. That's one of my goals to finish on the lead lap. Like the guys at my age, they're lucky they're sitting in the grandstand. So for me to be in that race, I got, I'm happy just to finish on the lead lap. That's a home run. That's a victory. So we go to, we go to, first of all, I have a great attitude when I get to Oyster Bed because it's a short track. Right. Reminds me of the cross between Sobel and, and Peterborough. Like it's, it's, it's a, I love that track. And um, so I go out and practice. And so my Chris White comes to me and says, uh, you're going to like these lap times. I said, how so? He said, you're 12 fastest under 26. Beautiful. I said, wow. I said, that's awesome. So I started outside pole in my heat besides Gosby, uh, Dylan Gosby. And we finished third with a whole bunch of those kids behind me that were probably like, they probably figured this guy's going to wear out in a 10 lap race, <laughs> but I, I was able to hang on to third. So that was high five on each other. That was uh, a big day for us. So in the feature, I got, they, they put me at the back, close to the back, which I thought I might be starting up closer up to the front anyway. So this is, this is another race that was meant a lot to me. We ended up going down a lot because we were at the back and that's such a short track and there was 26 cars. So, you know what? I mean, the, the the cars in the middle and the back are going to be breaking a lot sooner. You're just and the cars up front are going to be gone. Yep. And um, anyway, so they caught us. They put me down a lap, one lap down, on lap one thirty five, right? On lap one thirty five, the race monitor showed me fifth fastest. Really, really. Can so? you imagine? Yeah. Oh, can that, that's unbelievable. Like, uh, well, to me, that's unbelievable. Sure. No, <laughs> it's mean, called pacing passes. yourself, pacing yourself and let the race come to you a little bit, too. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, Gary, so, I've got to yeah. hit a quick break. Uh, can you hang out with us here? I still got a couple more questions for you. We'll hit yeah, this I'm, quick break I'm, and we'll I'm, come back. Yeah, I'm here till Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back with uh, Gary okay. Elliott all live tonight on Race Time Radio. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, race fans, this is Chad Collins from Delaware Speedway Safety Crew. You're listening to Race Time Radio. 
Race Time Radio is brought to you by RPM Race Parts. Order today. Race tomorrow. Also by VP Race Fuels, the worldwide leader in race fuel technology. And by Dawson Dental Centers. Get your victory lane smile at DawsonDental.ca. Quick Fire Starters, the world's best fire starter. There's nothing like sitting around the fire, is there? Lots of life's biggest moments and big challenges get solved right around the fire pit, including many family magic moments. The best way to ensure that fire goes each and every time is to use a Quick Quick Fire Starter. For over 30 years, Quick Quick Fire Starters have been made right here in Canada. I'll never forget when my son was young, thunder was rolling in the distance. Oh, Dad, what was that? Well, that's just the angels falling in heaven. <laughs> Dad, what was that? That's what happens when you pull Grandpa's finger. Quick, quick, fire starters. <laughs> the world's best fire starter. <laughs> this is NASCAR champion, Brian Blaney. Chase Elliott. Kyle Larson. Joey Logano. Kyle Busch. Martin Truex Jr. Brad Keselowski. What is Sirius XM NASCAR Radio? It's a place to talk about your favorite sport. You know, I renew my subscription. It never comes off this channel. The whole day is awesome. It's a place to hear from the biggest names in NASCAR. Joey Logano, what are you doing? I got the Sirius XM set up at my house so I can jump on more often. Joey, I want to first thank you for doing this. This is awesome for the fans. It's a trusted source for breaking news. Major stories today, my friends. Let's get down to business. There's just never a dull moment. It's every NASCAR race heard live, including in-car radios. Legato gets into the back. He shoves him up the racetrack. Stay out, stay out, stay out. Trust me. Bubba Wallace to the lead at Talladega. Good. Yeah! And it's classic races that honor the history of the sport. Dale Earnhardt is going to win the Daytona 500. So what is Series X in NASCAR Radio? It's your 24-7 home for all things NASCAR. The way you guys cover these races is unbelievable. Channel 90 streaming right now on the Sirius XM app. There are thousands of parts and pieces that go into today's race cars. GSR Parts has what you need. And they ship coast to coast in Canada. GSR Parts specializes in dirt sprint car chassis, modifieds, and so much more. Whether you race dirt or asphalt, road course, or in a straight line, GSR Parts has the parts you need to get you back on track and in victory lane. Visit them on Facebook at GSR Parts. Even though Napa is a nationally known name, Nearly all of our stores are built from the ground up by local owners and families. People you might call neighbors will be here, there, and everywhere. Doing what neighbors do to keep their communities moving forward. You stop by a Napa Auto Parts store, you can count on Napa know-how. Tonight's Race Time Radio is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts stores, New Glasgow, Andy Ganesh, and Port Hawkesbury, Nova Scotia. You can count on Napa know-how. AP Race Fuels, the worldwide leader in race fuel technology. From the high banks of Daytona, we cover it all. Ooh, that's going to leave a mark. And now, back to Joe's. Hey, shake and bake, Cal. Woo, shake and bake. And here on Race Time Radio. And welcome back, everyone, to Race Time Radio. So, so glad you could tune in tonight. Rev TV Canada. Got to thank Mike and Ed and all the guys at Rev TV for getting us all hooked up and on the air every Tuesday from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern. You can count on Race Time Radio and get you up to date on all your short track news from across Canada and into the U.S. as well. We always include our U.S. guys uh, and tonight, we are spending some time with Canada's Iron Man. He's from Truro, Nova Scotia, drives a 36 Quaker State machine. His name is Gary Elliott. Gary, you've got statistics coming out the yin-yang. What is going to be your ultimate goal? What have you got set? Because I know you, Gary. Whenever you set a goal, you tend to hit it. What is the goal this year? So this year... Um, we have 890 consecutive nights. So on our 10th night this year, we're going to hit 900 in a row. So I, I, I want to really, I mean, I think that honestly, that's going to be easy. If I could do it, a guy, come, a guy came here in March 
of uh, last year and bought a die cast off me. And he asked me, he said, what's, what's my goals? And I said, I'd like to reach 900 in a row. He said, why not a thousand? I thought, oh, God, a thousand. But a thousand would be doable if I could race another five years at 20 nights a year. Right. That'll be the hardest part, right? To get that many nights in. I might have to go and live in Ontario for about five months so I can get 25 nights and run a modified and a late model. Yeah. But that's one of my goals for sure. Like 900. That looks pretty good. Uh, the other one we're going to reach this year is number of races we've been in. And that's 3000. We're at 2,974 total races, heats, consies, trophy dashes, features. So semis, like all those things over the years. Right. And um, the other one too, like this is kind of a, a long shot too. Like, in 2031, it's going to be Quaker State's 100th anniversary. Right. So I would like to race if I could till then. Uh, Bill Zardo gave me a lot of kind of a, not encouragement, but a lot of uh, inspiration to race, you know, like he raced at 80 years old and he was doing really well. Yep. And God bless him. And, you know, I miss him. And so does the racing community. But you know what? I, I would like to be able to race a few more years. I don't know if I can reach a thousand in a row. I guarantee you both my kids, Shirley and David say, dad, there's no way, right? right? No way, but I'm still healthy. I'm still ha happy. God has been good. I've been uh, blessed with so much. If I can keep my sponsors, um, like, and, and, and have sponsors that would support me. Right. Then, Cause that's the biggest thing with, with racing would be, uh, you know, having been able to afford to do it, but, that's kind of that's kind of my goals. Um, uh, this year's fifty six, so I'd have to run. And, and so honestly, like I, I've had such a great schedule, um, that I mean a great career, that I it doesn't matter if I race sixty years. Right. Um, I'm I'm probably making it hard on any young kids, <laughs> like Kyle Steckley, for example. If he says, "Hey, Dad, let's keep track of all our nights that we've raced." So we can beat Gary. Yeah. Because now we need we need to run 1,333 nights, and we need to get 900 in a row. So Scott will say, "Okay, you have to run at least 20 nights a year for the next 45 years." <laughs> so that's yeah. just to make the streak. That's not the. I mean, you have to reach 1,300 nights. You have to run 20 nights a year for 65 years. Incredible. That'll make Scott 85. I might still be racing then, so I don't know. I, I doubt it. So will you have your schedule on where you're going to be with the 36 Quaker State machine uh, for 2024? Do you got that posted somewhere? No, it, I, I have it finished, and I'm going to send it to my printer, the one that does my autograph cards. Right. I'm going to send it to him to have it printed, and then it'll be probably put on my Facebook or on my – well, on Facebook and my website probably in the next week because other people are asking me too. my schedule this year is probably 16 nights. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I'm going to go to Flam Flamborough twice. So I'm going to go for their last, last points night, then the Oktoberfest, Right. And then ACC. So, and I'm running 13 races here. Nice. I'm going to run a full tour and then I'm going to run a few specials. I'm going to do the, the race at, uh, Riverglade mm -hmm. for the anniversary. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be uh, great for Gary McLean. I dealt with his dad in 1984 when we 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 ran there with the hobby cars. And then I'm I'm going to run an extra petty and an extra uh, oyster bed. Right. So night number one for you will come up. Scotia Speed World is it night number yeah. one? Yeah. So that's on uh, May 18th. And Quaker State all back on board with you. Uh, that that's yeah. amazing, Gary. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really happy that they are. It it's it's really hard to keep sponsors, and um, so I have to do everything I can to tell them that like I should be grandfathered. They should, yeah. like the the guy that owns Quaker State should say, look, all you guys are in charge of departments. The one guy to stand is Gary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm just teasing. But they're they're. They've been really good to me, and what what's hard is is dealing with a different person every couple of years because right. they don't know me. Yeah. And uh, but this year I'm so blessed because the new marketing manager has known me for five years. Good. So 
That, that doesn't mean I can get favors, but it does mean that no. he knows me. <laughs> but Gary, you also earn that logo. You earn it. You're not just at the Speedways. I can't tell you how many times I've shown up at different places in Nova Scotia, I might add. Jerry and I will be popping in to get a case of water or something at Walmart. And out front, there's Gary Elliott set up with the 36 car. The crew is there. They're all dressed. And uh, it just blows my mind, Gary, the amount of time you spend promoting the sponsors on your car. That's why you got full quarter panels, man. Well, I, I, I believe it's twofold. I believe I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I, I do agree it's my sponsors too. But last year we were at Canadian Tire, and this lady came over with her two children, and then I put them in the car, and they, you know, they got their picture taken. She said, "So where do you race?" And I said, "Well, tomorrow night we're racing at Scotia World." Guess who? When we come out on the track, we we angle parked our cars and we did a driver introduction. Guess who come running up to the fence? Those two kids. Yeah. So that was pretty awesome because we need to support our tracks. Like that's to me the most important thing. Like sponsors, yes, but we need to support race tracks. So, you know, like that's we want fans to go there, but we want drivers to go there. We want to put on a show. Only one guy can win. Mm -hmm. And everybody should respect each other so we don't wreck each other so we can come out for the next race. But I think that's the most important thing. Like, I I have a race car. I have a desire to race. And I'm so thankful that these racetracks are there so we can race at them. Gary, I got one more question for you, and then I got to cut you loose because we got Kyle coming up, and I still have to hit a break. Uh, I can take Kyle's time. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. And you know what? He's probably sitting back enjoying listening to you, my dad. Uh, He's a great kid. I love that kid. Yeah, uh, just amazing. Gary, uh, the, the question I had now eludes me. I forget what I was going to ask you, uh, but it's just tremendous catching up with you. Uh, you got to know that. Um, that. Just you're amazing. And go get him this year. I know we'll be out to do the IWK 250, and I look forward to sitting down with you again and having some fun. Uh, just do me a favor. Be safe and go get them. Thank you very much. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go out and race as hard as I can race. You always do. It. You always do. Take care of Buttons, your uh, sidekick dog. And uh, thanks, Bruce, yeah. for, uh, for, for getting everything all hooked up there. We surely do appreciate it. And, Gary, we will definitely get you back on the air throughout the course of the year. There you go. There's buttons. Always, hey, our pets mean as much as there is what I was going to ask you. How many die cows you got left? I got about 125 left. How can they so, get them? Yeah, I'm, uh, I, had, I had to order 700, so I've been really blessed. A lot of And everybody that gets them, uh, the pictures I sent them, uh, they say it doesn't do it any justice. So no, no, no. It's these a are car, absolutely and really beautiful. For and uh, can I just take one minute? And uh, Thir thirty and Kyle, seconds. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle won't mind. <laughs> thirty. I just seconds. want to thank my sponsors. Yes. So obviously, uh, uh, Quaker State, uh, Grindstone Landscaping. They've been with me since two thousand and eight. PPG, um, Canadian Tire, Finish Line, um, Nickerson Auto in Nova Scotia. Um, Obviously, Race Time Radio, you're on my car because I want you to be on there. And uh, Robbie's Towing, uh, he's a big supporter of racing, and he's been with me. Epic Racewear, they make fantastic stuff, and they're they're going to help me with I'll have hats and hoodies and T-shirts this year yeah, through fun. them, so uh, that's going to be good. I have some new sponsors this year. Um, Home Royalties from Ontario is sponsoring me, and I'm so happy with, with, with them. I'm going to do a show at their place when I go to Ontario. In Thornhill, uh, a company called uh, Churro Mazda. They're right in Churro. Uh, they, they're they're really good. They love racing. They go to the the owner goes to the U.S. and right and watch races. And then Jerome Tracy. I don't know if you know him. Have you ever met him? But he has an auto body shop in Cape Breton. Right. So he he painted my car this year, and I really thank him for that. And a company called Rural Works. They they I I do I fix stone chips. On windshields and i and i went there to, to their place but i'm going there for a couple of years so they wanted to be on my car too and so i'm just really blessed i'm so thankful hey we're the blessed ones we get to watch you each and every time we hit the racetrack gary elliott be safe thanks so much and happy birthday my friend hey and 
say hi to the rest of the guys coming on. Thank you for me. Absolutely. That is Gary Elliott, driver of the 36 Quaker State Machine. He's still got some of these die casts left if you want one. Uh, get a hold of him through his Facebook page. I'll tell you what, I've got a lot of die cast hanging around. Nothing compares to this 36 car. It's that nice. We're going to hit a quick break. When we come back, Kyle Steckley, driver of the 22, uh, is going to join us all live tonight on Race Time Radio. This is Randy Hooker, owner of the Country View Golf Course, number 38, Chevrolet, and you're listening to Race Time Radio. Tonight's Race Time Radio is brought to you by Leaf Racewear, fuel your passion and confidence at leafracewear.com. We're an essential part of any team. And by Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, Canada's biggest sports car racing weekends of the year. For tickets and details, get to CanadianTireMotorsportPark.com. The SXM app is your one-stop destination for everything you love. Uh, things keep getting bigger and bigger for these two. Everything you missed. You two were so funny together on the Oscars the other night. And exclusive podcasts, video, and on-demand access to your favorite stations. Hear your favorite team from the car, from your home, or on the go. Walked in, put it between his legs, shoots it, score! All with the SXM app. A free download now from the Google Play or Apple App Store today. Tonight's Race Time Radio is brought to you by GSR Parts. Sprint car specialists with chassis, engines for dirt or asphalt cars. From wings to springs, GSR's got you covered. Contact Terry and start winning today. Also by Quick Quick Fire Starters, the world's best fire starter. So, how's that rebuild going? Have you got that race car ready to go yet? You still looking for parts? Have you called GSR Parts yet? You want to save some money, right? So you can buy the stuff you need throughout the course of the year. GSR Parts carries all the big name brands, along with some parts that are manufactured right on site. Centrally located in Ontario, you can stop by and pick up the parts you need, or they'll ship them nationwide. Whether you race dirt or asphalt, they even carry parts for road course cars. 226-583-8001. And keep an eye on GSR Parts Facebook page. Rev TV, your motorsports and automotive destination. Watch live races from around the world and right here at home. From two wheels to four and so much more. Rev TV is your source for motorsports. Rev TV features exclusive race series, up-to-date news coverage, documentaries, how-to programs, and adrenaline-filled lifestyle programs 24-7. Go green with Rev TV. Contact your TV provider to order. Tonight's Race Time Radio is fueled by... AP Race Fuels, the worldwide leader in race fuel technology. Your weekly fix of newsmakers and newsbreakers is found right here. We call it Race Time Radio with your host, Joe Chisholm. And welcome back, everyone, to Race Time Radio. So, so glad you could tune in tonight. Man, the season is getting so close up here in Canada. What do we got? One more week, and then we start getting into practices at Delaware Speedway, Flamborough Speedway, Sunset Speedway, and the list continues to grow there and thereafter. I know the one I've got circled on my calendar comes up May the 4th. I can't wait to get to Sunset Speedway for the Steve Slaughter 100. Uh, for the late models, it is going to be off the hook. I can't wait to get to Sunset May 4th. Come join us. It's going to be a lot of fun, but let's get back to the show, shall we? This next guest has been tearing the tracks up. He has had nothing but bad luck. Uh, but it's all out of the way now. It's got to be because uh, he. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter what happens. Kyle Steckley will turn around, go back on that racetrack, and dig and dig every single lap. There's no such thing as going out there and just riding around, not with the driver, the number 30 or the number 22, Kyle Steckley joins us now. What's going on there, champ? How you doing? 
I'm doing good, Joe. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on. Hey, uh, man, you had a beautiful start when you got to Hickory. It didn't last long. That 43 car, man, I'll tell you, I was pretty mad at him sitting here watching it on uh, on TV, watching it on Flow Racing, and man, I couldn't believe it. Just a little bit of contact and around you went, but a lot of damage. I thought it was just a cut tire. Not so. No, no, it was definitely pretty frustrating. I think we had a really good car there. It was it was fun to take my own car down with, with my team again. We had haven't been doing that lately, so that was really cool. But, yeah, we were just running there. I think we are passing for fourth, and then, yeah, the 43 come down on me, and uh, we cut a tire, which ended up the sway bar heim rubbed off it because just the track's so rough, and I had to go a whole lap around with a flat tire. So, unfortunately – screwed up the sway bar and the heim and all that so we we had to take the arm off and then i ran a couple laps with no sway bar and then we got her hooked back up and it was a, a bit of a disaster there for a while in that middle section of the race too there's a lot of a lot of wrecking and avoidance and a couple times not used to that but <laughs> we stayed out of trouble the rest of the race and got back up to 10 so it was a, a solid rebound oh yeah top 10 finish and uh yeah how about the crew that you've got assembled those guys you didn't drop a lap you stayed on the lead lap through that whole mess uh and i was astonished at that yeah yeah it was awesome my crew did a great job i had a lot of help from the laps of itches and and his team chad bryant racing so that was really cool and uh yeah, we came in a lot there and did a lot of work to that car just to try and get it better and better and better each each time so we could rebound the best we did. But, uh, yeah, it's just really cool to see everyone working together there. And, uh, you know, we had a couple guys from the Red Jones team helping me all weekend, a couple guys from up here in Canada. So everyone working together, and they did a great job. So really appreciative of them. You want to talk about somebody that freaked out? I was sitting there watching everything, and the announcer come on, and he said, well, kind of looks like Kyle Steckley's going to learn the hard way. And I thought, I don't know what that comment meant. And then he went on to say that you couldn't change the tire. And I went, no, 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 no. This is ridiculous now. Uh, and I know I clearly heard the announcer say that you couldn't change a tire. I guess what he didn't say was that you couldn't put a sticker on you would have had to put an emergency tire on. He didn't say that, though. Uh, the way he alluded was that you were doing something illegal by changing the tire that was cut down. And there was no question if that tire was <laughs> up or down. It was gone, let alone down. Uh, is that a rule in that series where you can't change a tire? No, it's a, it's a pretty basic rule in all late mall racing. Normally, you have four emergency tires, and... And that's what you get to change only if you get a, a flat or a cut tire or anything. I think some series have rules that it's like eight pounds in the left and 15 pounds in the right. So you got to have a, a tire going down or a tire issue to be able to use them. And they can't be brand new tires. So right. there's a bit of a tire rule there. And uh, But yeah, if you got a flat like I did, then there's no question you can change it. Hey, uh, i got to ask you, you'd be a perfect guy to ask, too. Hickory's Motor Speedway, iconic, historic, all those and above. What's it like to race on that track? Because it looked like the car spent more time bouncing and in the air coming off turn four. How can you set up for something like that? Yeah, it's it's a really big track. It's it's kind of smaller, like the tracks we have up here. It kind of races like some of the tracks we have up here, but man, oh man, is it rough, and it creates for for some challenges when you're setting up the car. So, you know, we, we changed a lot of stuff in our practice and uh, worked on shocks a lot, just trying to smooth out the ride as much as we could, and we did a pretty good job of it. I was happy of the progress we made in practice, and uh, yeah, it's a unique track. It was really fun, you know, just going out there and practicing on it once the race came. It was it was one of those tracks where it's just, thing. you know, it promotes rough racing for sure, but, you know, it's it's good short track racing. You know, I watched the late model stocks that came up after the pro late models, and I got to say, Kyle, it was a different looking race. The guys were easier to run side by side by the look of it. It provided maybe a better uh, a better show, if you will, uh, for, for the viewer. 
and I commented to Joe Jr. I said, look it, what a difference between the pro late models and the late model stocks on this track. He said, yeah, there's a big difference between having bump stops and not. Yeah, yeah, the, the late model stocks are really interesting cars. Uh, I haven't worked on them too much, but obviously Trayton, I haven't been around them at all. I haven't really worked on them at all, but uh, they've uh, – just there it's an interesting series they've got a really good program going there with the cars tour and they're introducing the pro late models this is their only their second year but their late model stock program is it's honestly kind of like a pinty's car so i'm not surprised trayton's doing well and uh I'm sure he's going to have a lot of success the remainder of the season. Well, they snuck one in on me last night. Uh, I, here I am. I'm watching the ASA stuff from Montgomery Speedway. And what a racetrack, am I, Dad? And uh, later on, I see uh, Sue actually seen a, a post. Uh, Trayton finished fourth. And I went, finished fourth doing what? Was he go-kart racing somewhere? And sure enough, it was the 250 that was the rain out, the makeup. They, yep. they snuck that one in, man. I totally missed the boat on that, but Trayton got a fourth-place finish. His consistency is uh, impeccable. It's still coming. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm happy for him, and I'm excited to see what he does the rest of the year. So, now, what's up with the 22-30? Uh, you've been running different tracks, different places. We know we're going to see you in the APC series when things fire up here, but uh, the ASA schedule... Looks like May before you get back on the schedule down there. So I guess your next race, the 22 in APC, right? Uh, no, <laughs> but uh, we're doing too much racing. Well, there's no such thing, but it, it's nice to have this little break here, getting the car ready for back home in the APC series. So I've been working nonstop on that, getting our car ready for next Saturday for the for the United Late Mile Series practice day. So that's the next time I'm on track, and then the plan is, as of right now, as long as everything goes smooth, we're going to head out to Berlin with our pro late model and race race there on the 27th with the CRA Jags Tour, and, and we're going to see how Berlin is. And uh, I've heard a lot of stories about it. I know it's a, a hard place to get around, so I thought I'd like to try it, try it for myself and see how we can do with our APC 22. Wow. Looks like a big donut, but it's a real fast one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be outstanding. Now that will be with which car? The thirty or is it the twenty two? No, the twenty two. That'll be with the same car that we just ran in Hickory. So our plan is we've got two twenty two pro late models and we're gonna have one for the APC series and we're keeping one in the USA rule books. So uh we can take it down if we wanna go down there and I, we're gonna plan to go to Owasa and, and maybe Toledo and a couple other races down there with our 22 and the prolate models. So we're gonna stay busy as much as we can. Are they drastically different uh, going across the border between the two different styles of prolate models? No, they're really similar. It's honestly just some of the bigger ticket items like the APC series does a great job at keeping the cost down and, and keeping everything to a a minimum so they can get you know everyone can get a chance to race competitively and uh so going down to the states we just have to buy you either buy or rent a set of shocks and uh it, they have different transmissions you can we run a two-speed raptor transmission up here no shifting and uh down south you can run three speeds four speeds jericho's all that stuff so we we bought a transmission and, and the set of shocks and now that we got that, it's really the weights are similar. All the rules are really, really similar other than that. So it's just those couple big ticket items that you need to pick up. How much longer are we going to have to wait before we can uh, look at an ARCA race and say, hey, there's our guy. There's Kyle Steckley in an ARCA car. Has there been any talk? Because I know Rhett Jones, uh, they're known for the ARCA series stuff as well as what they're doing. Yeah, there's definitely been talk, um, you know, watching the ARCA series and you know, I'd like to make a start there and, and see how we can do. I think we'd have a lot of success with what Rhett Jones has done in the past. And, you know, it's just, I think I've got experience with the Pinty's car that would correlate to Arca. And, you know, nothing's, nothing's been set in stone by any means, but there's been talks of, of hopefully getting in a car for a couple of the more northern races, like the race in Michigan and Toledo, all them races. And, uh, but, you know, who knows what will happen. I'm not too worried about that right now, but it would definitely be cool to 
cool to make a start in Arca down the road and, and see where it goes. Well, you got lots on your plate, uh, trust me. Sideboards are needed uh, for what you've got all going on. But with my eye looking down the road, man, I can't wait to one day say Kyle Steckley in the 30 at Daytona International Speedway for the Arca 200 down there. That, my friend, would be cool. That would be awesome. That would be amazing. Yeah. Well, one day. One day. Keep yeah. doing what you're doing. It's going to happen, and it'll be here before you know it. And then onward and upward. Kyle, it's been great catching up with you. How's the old boy doing? Good. He's actually just out, outside the office here. He's watching the watching the NASCAR race. So he's doing good. We've been working lots, getting our late mall ready for the APC series this past week. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun year with him. Yeah, not too much damage other than what we spoke of, right, under the 22. Nothing structural that you had to do? Just uh, quite a bit of body work, honestly. The right side of the car was pretty tore up, so quite a bit of body work there. And then, uh, yeah, getting our car for up here that we haven't we haven't raced yet, so we're we're getting it all ready to go for, for next Saturday with the APC Series. Wow. Man, it hasn't uh, – it feels like forever getting here, but – now, uh, and looking at the long-range forecast, it actually looks sunny and 15 degrees Celsius, which is going to be a peach of a day to get out Perfect. and do some practicing. Kyle, we love it when you come on and update us like you did tonight. And, hey, more power to you. We'll keep our eyes pinned. And uh, you know me. I'll be hounding you all the way through to get you back on here and keep us up to date, buddy. That's awesome. Thanks for having me on, Joe. You betcha. Kyle Steckley. Oh, man. He, along with Trayton Lapsovich and Joe Lawrence, and oh, the list is long, and they're doing a fantastic job. Again, Trayton Lapsovich comes home with a fourth place finish in the 250 just yesterday. Um, it, it was a rained event, and they made it up and totally slid right by me on that one, but uh, it totally enjoy watching. The cars to her late model stocks. Uh, it was McCartney getting the win. Uh, the, the guy's, I, I believe, a three-time champion in the series. Got lots of wins. Uh, I look down the list. Chad McCumbie finishes sixth. Uh, a lot of big names. A lot of guys have done uh, uh, just tremendous. And Trayton Lapsovich, uh, two, top pl uh, two top ten finishes until last night, comes home fourth. So, he is chipping away at it. That 77 car is going to be in victory lane before you know it. I can guarantee it. Uh, we are getting close to the top of the hour. We're going to throw it back to Sirius XM, get you up to date on some news and some highlights that you may have missed in hour number one. And then hour number two is up. We will have Will March on the show, Ontario Motor Speedway, that big, beautiful dirt track. It's going to open. All good news. It's got new ownership. Will is part of the family that uh, has now bought the surface, and uh, he's going to join us. We'll get you uh, up to date on, <coughs> excuse me, everything that is coming forward for that racetrack. We'll also talk some NASCAR Canada with a guy that has won 18 races. Kevin Lacroix is going to join us. His next race will be his 101st start in NASCAR Canada. Uh, he is hooked up with Donnie Thompson. What a group. I'll tell you, uh, put, putting Donnie Thompson with any team would be magic, but watching Kevin and Donnie go to work along with the crew, just about unstoppable, these guys. Uh, and I know Kevin's excited for another year. And then we'll have Tony Stevens on the show. We'll talk about live streaming of races. He does it with Pit Row TV. He'll be a good guy to ask. Uh, I'll get a few questions for him to help you, the race fan, uh, sort of pick your way through the live streaming landscape today. Uh, there's different options, and there's different companies that are supplying different stuff. And uh, it, it, I figure Tony Stevens would be the man to ask these questions to, and we'll do that tonight all live right here on Race Time Radio. But we're going to throw it back to you in Toronto, get us up to date, and then we'll be back for hour number two, all live tonight in the Race Time Radio studio. Stay right there, everybody. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Canada Talks on Sirius XM, channel 167.
Tonight's Race Time Radio is brought to you by Leaf Racewear. Fuel your passion and confidence at leafracewear.com. We're an essential part of any team. And by Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, Canada's biggest sports car racing weekends of the year. For tickets and details, get to canadiantiremotorsportpark.com. So, how's that rebuild going? Have you got that race car ready to go yet? You still looking for parts? Have you called GSR Parts yet? You want to save some money, right? So you can buy the stuff you need throughout the course of the year. GSR Parts carries all the big name brands, along with some parts that are manufactured right on site. Centrally located in Ontario, you can stop by and pick up the parts you need, or they'll ship them nationwide. <laughs> Sirius XM 167, where Canada talks. And just like that, our number two begins all live tonight from the Race Time Radio studio. So, so glad you could tune in tonight. Uh, just before we get to Will March and talking about Ontario Motor Speedway, uh, I was out yesterday at the Two Speed Motorsports uh, Grand Opening in Hanover. And I got a quick reward with Joe Jr. I'm going to play it for you right now. Well, here we are, grand opening of Two Speed Motorsports in Hanover, Ontario. A beautiful looking shop. Junior, it's here. Today's the day. How's it been? Hey, it's been really cool. It's, uh, it, you know, getting this place fired up uh, has been, uh, you know, a labor of love, number one. <laughs> but it's also been super cool um, uh, watching it all come together and, and I think the coolest part is the support that we've got from the racing community. It's been, it's been so cool. Obviously, watching Two Speed grow like it has, uh, but but watching all of the the support come together uh, and culminate here uh, at the shop today for the grand opening, uh, it's been awesome. So it's uh, it's here. We're here to stay. I think we've surprised a lot of people, and uh, I think that there's uh, there's still a lot more surprises coming down the pipe. Just knowing what we've got uh, happening. Well, you guys have really gone all out. It uh, doesn't seem to matter. I've taken a beautiful walk through this building, and uh, this is the showroom. When you come in through the front door, uh, they get a beautiful boardroom back here, a uh, nice kiosk right at the front door, and uh, that's where you're going to be greeted. How about the Raptor filter line? Uh, Junior, you guys have uh, got a lot of products here compared to day one. Uh, when it started out with just some jack stands, right? Yeah, it's been pretty cool. You know, uh, January, I've told a lot of people this story today. January 2023, uh, we had uh, technically four SKUs. Uh, we got to Motorama, we had nine SKUs that year uh, in March. And, and uh, now we're up to uh, uh, just shy of 110 SKUs that are two speeds. Uh, and uh, we're also a, a major uh, retailer for great brands like Dynaline. Uh, we've got a wicked partnership coming down the pipe with uh, with NTN Bearings uh, as well. We, we're working with Ilium, uh, uh, Ilium uh, Manufacturing and, and Parts Manufacturing. So, uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been really cool, and and uh, we're also getting into uh, the service side of things uh, with uh, the addition of Dan Lawler uh, onto the team. Uh, we're doing uh, uh, a lot of maintenance, a lot of mechanical work. Uh, you know, we, we also get into fabrication work um, and, and even, you know, into uh, the, the maintenance side for uh, local racers across the board, uh, whether it be a, a street stock, whether it be a junior late model, whether it be an APC car or a NASCAR car, uh, we, can, we can do it. We've got the, uh, the, the parts, the pieces, the manpower to, uh, to bring, it, bring it to life and, and uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's starting small and, and building into something that's really cool. Well, I, we don't see it here in the showroom, but I know you guys just got a whole bunch of aluminum in. Uh, you've got Lexan that you offer up. Uh, there's a lot more that, uh, you know, that, that race teams are going to be able to use. You got a lot of parts and pieces now expanding into even more. Yeah, for sure. Um, we're, we're going to be one of the largest 
um, distributors for um, painted aluminum products, uh, like painted sheets, um, which is a major expense for a lot of teams uh, here in Canada. I know it's, it's definitely a pain point uh, for everybody in the, in the industry. Um, we've secured a, a really unique partnership uh, and, and we're, we're going to be distributing, uh, uh, right now we've got white and black sheets of 040 aluminum, uh, single sheets for $139. Um, now it's pickup only here in Hanover, um, but uh, we also are, are going to be getting into the supply side for the bulk guys. So uh, lots of opportunity. Incredible. Office hours. Is there such a thing? Uh, if somebody's rolling through and they want to pick up some parts, some stuff. What's the best way? Is there hours of operation going forward? If you want to get technical, we're eight till five, Monday to Friday. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be available though. Uh, we we make it work. Uh, uh, you know, it's uh, I can't say that if you show up at uh, you know eleven o'clock at night on a Sunday, <laughs> we're probably not gonna be able to to support you. But you know, we we try to make after hours work for sure for everybody. I know everybody's working, and they also have their their uh, their needs within motorsports. So it's uh, reach out, give us a call. We'll make it work and and uh, and fulfill the needs. So um, lots of uh, lots of flexibility there, but uh, you know, eight to five is preferred. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess guys can put their order in, arrange for pickup or what have you. Uh, like you say, you guys will make it all work. Congratulations on uh, all that you guys have done. Now it's just a uh, hey, put to the floor, man. Race season's here, and you guys are definitely ready. Congratulations. This looks amazing. Uh, Corey McAllister has uh, got to be one happy dude, man. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for having us on. And, uh, man, I miss being on the show with you every week. <laughs> I, I got to come back and be in the studio uh, uh, coming up here in the next couple weeks. Well, your seat is wide open, ready for you anytime. That's Joe Jr., Two Speed Motorsports. Uh, you can get to them uh, every which way you can think of, social media wise. Uh, they've got it all covered. Oh, look at that. I see Ingrid over there. That's, you know, Tuttle Power when you watch one of those videos, her and her husband here at the grand opening. But uh, that does it, big guy. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks very much. Yeah. Hey, it was great catching up with Junior. Uh, beautiful day for a ride in the Corvette yesterday. And I took the opportunity, took a shot down to the grand opening, and uh, it was great to see them all. Uh, and Trust me, uh, we cleared out the uh, the showroom part to shoot that video. Everybody was out in the shop part, and uh, they, they got hoists all set up. Corey had all of his cars lined up, and uh, there was some uh, sprint cars, and you name it. They had everything there. Uh, Dan Lawler and the whole team was out back, and uh, it was a busy day. Busy, busy day, and uh, they got a bright future coming up, but... Uh, what do you say we get back to the show here and we'll welcome in Will Marsh. Uh, now, I can see his name, so probably, ah, and now I can see him. What's going on, Will? How are you doing? Hey, Joe, how are you? Fantastic, man. Congratulations on the new ownership. Thank you. We really appreciate it. I uh, wasn't quite expecting it, but uh, here we are. Well, and good for you guys, too. Now, I know it's not just you. It's your dad and your brother. Uh, it's, it's a family deal, is it? Yes, sir. So my father, Craig March, is the owner. Uh, my brother, uh, Craig March Jr., does all pretty much the paperwork side of things as well, a lot of hands-on work at the track. And then I'm supposed to be mainly the track maintenance guy. Ah, there you go. So you're going to be the guy prepping the track and getting it ready to go. Uh, that's a daunting task at a dirt track, isn't it? Yes, sir. It's uh, definitely something that I, it's, it took me a lot of learning curves overall at first, but I'm excited to take them on. And I'm, I'm just excited to get learning and start the season. See, unlike me, uh, when I had bought Sobel Speedway, an asphalt track up here in Sobel Beach, uh, there's, you know, as long as the track is swept and clean, you can turn the guys loose. Uh, you guys, uh, there's a lot of prep work that needs to be done on dirt. When I stepped in as an owner of a racetrack, I'd never turned a lap in a car. Not so with you guys. You guys are uh, are, are racers, uh, so you know what you're looking for. I really appreciate that, those kind words, but uh, yes, sir. So far, uh, we've been 
racing our entire life. Uh, it goes back as far as my great grandfather. Uh, my dad grew up racing. I grew up the track with him. My brother raced a little bit as uh, well as well. Uh, it's one of those things that I just really wanted to go dirt racing. Wanted to try out the 602 crate sprints, and uh, you know, my dad just fell right in love, and one thing kind of went through another, and kept snowballing from there. Oh, you gotta love it when it comes together. And this is probably, uh, it, albeit something that came together in a relative hurry, uh, it's probably been a lifelong dream for your dad to one day have a race truck. And how much better can you get it when your kids can step in and help? Uh, to, to make the whole thing go. That's kind of cool. Absolutely. It's exactly like you said. Now, not only do you have a racetrack in your backyard, but it's one of those things that every racer, race fan, anybody that likes to be involved in racing, but just can only imagine what how amazing that is. And not, and not only just to have the racetrack and the opportunity that it brings, but just the memories that we're able to bring and create for families and young children. Just like you said, we all have memories growing up in the tra or being on the track and with our families and friends and things like that. And uh, to be... On the other side, and to kind of be the ones creating those memories now, it's a, it's a great opportunity, and we're, we're very blessed, and uh, we're just excited to take on this opportunity. Yeah, you got to love it when a plan comes together. Now, April 15th, or 14th today, I guess 15th tomorrow, uh, we're, we're not far off starting a season. Uh, do you guys pick up a schedule that was maybe kind of partially done, or uh, did you guys have to formulate everything right from scratch? Uh, yes, sir. We started working uh, right from scratch. Uh, Craig Mark, my brother, uh, instantly got on the phone, and he spent I don't know how many hours getting this schedule ready and making sure all the uh, divisions were ready and going to be able to uh, have enough car count, things like that, make sure we were competitive season. Um, and then overall, we were just trying to bring different divisions to the uh, back to South Buxton as well. And not only the mini stocks, but a lot of the uh, sprint cars. We're bringing the Southern Ontario Sprints, the Great Lakes Super Sprints, the uh, 602 crate sprints, and then the wingless uh, Ontario traditional sprints, as well as uh, a couple other uh, vintage modifieds and uh, Great Lake legends. Yeah, safe to say it's going to be a sprint car track. You guys obviously love sprint car racing. Will we see dirt late models? I know Hooker grew up on that track, uh, South Buxton Speedway, and those kind of guys. Will we see the dirt late models appear at the Speedway much? Oh, yes, sir. They're, all the weekly divisions will definitely be here. We're not trying to take any weekly divisions away or take the late models away or modify the way we know this is a late model uh, uh, country or uh, county kind of thing. And uh, it, it's one of those things where we're just really trying to bring more diversity, like more different classes kind of thing. Because uh, we know some guys really do love wing, uh, sprint cars and stuff. They don't want to always necessarily have to travel to further tracks that are two, three hours away kind of thing. So we're just trying to have a little bit more diversity each week kind of thing for different guys. That's awesome. Good stuff. Adding to the show never hurts. Uh, it, you know, getting more diversified, uh, getting different classes in there. It's funny, you know, uh, at, at, at a lot of tracks, when the mini stock come out, if you're a big dirt late model guy or a big asphalt late model guy, uh, they say, well, the concession lines will fill up. The four cylinders are coming out. But there is a ton of four cylinder fans that wouldn't miss a lot and they really don't care about the late model guys. It's funny, isn't it, Will, how race fans sort of attach themselves to the class uh, that they really like. And I guess a lot has to do with the guys behind the wheel. When you know somebody in a race, it really makes it special. And that's what we try and do here at Race Time Radio is put a face to the car number and uh, fans will do the rest. They attach and then look out. Yes, sir. You're 100% right. It's just like you brought up with the uh, asphalt tracks alone. Bone stocks are a huge, it, uh, they keep a lot of asphalt tracks alive overall. And it's one of those things where it's a great, not only uh, learning class, but in general, it's a good, affordable class that it's still fun. It may not be the biggest engines, they may not be uh, turning the fastest laps, but you're out there just to have fun. And we're not out there to win big bucks. Or you know, none of us are, we all hope to make it to the show one day, but unfortunately, a lot of us aren't going to do that. So it's one of those things that we just really wanted to, that's why we brought the mini stocks back and stuff. Is, we just want to create opportunities for guys just to come out and go racing. You know, it may not always be the, the race that certain fans may want to see, but there's certain fans that would love to see that class. So it's kind of works out. Yeah, it sure does. It, it, it's funny. Uh, you know, a few years ago, car counts were really hurting in different classes at different tracks. And I know I've always said 
As long as you got two cars that are competitive on a speedway, that's all everybody's going to be watching. If you can get side-by-side -side racing action, you have got something to show. It uh, doesn't matter if there's 30 cars on the track or whether there's two. As long as they're racing, people are getting their money's worth. We all want to see a lot of cars, but uh, as long as you got side by side, you got it licked. When is night number one for Ontario Motor Speedway? Opening night would be uh, May 11th. We will have all of our weekly divisions there. Uh, we will be filming every uh, Saturday race and broad or uh, not live, but we will be releasing it late on that week, probably on a Tuesday. We're thinking. Um, as well as uh, hopefully bringing G-Force later on in the season. Um, there's going to be a, a, a lot of different divisions at first uh, coming to, like, at the beginning of the year. Uh, we're going to have on June 15th, we're going to have Southern Ontario Sprints and the Great Lakes Super Sprints. We're kind of trying to end, uh, just like we're going to have Ontario uh, Traditional Sprints in May. Uh, just so when guys kind of see right off the hop that we're going to keep everything similar at the way things were, but we're just bringing some different classes along the way. But overall, we're not trying to change how the track is or anything. We're just trying to improve the facility and overall the speedway for the racers, but we're not trying to overall change how the heart of the track or anything like that is. We're with Will March tonight. He is one of the owners. Uh, he's a, a, a part of the family that owns the, the speedway. Just took the keys at the end of uh, last week, and they're getting prepared for 2024. It was looking like we weren't going to have this track open, and uh, the good news is, now it is. It's going to be open, and it's going to be full tilt straight ahead. Uh, Will, when you take a look at the industry, have you been getting calls from other tracks saying, hey, welcome aboard? Yes, sir. Honestly, that's one thing that we uh, really weren't sure what to expect, but we've gotten a lot of support knowledge from other track owners and track members, but just racers in general just reaching out, asking if there's any help we can uh, possibly use. Uh, a lot of volunteers. Um, Guys offering their use, uh, like uh, uh, offering their equipment and stuff. If anything ever broke down, things like that. The support we've received has honestly been amazing. Uh, it's just one of those things where that's why we really want to keep improving, just the track, keeping with the safety and things like that. So when guys can come out here, and go as fast as they possibly can, and without having any concerns in their mind, and all the fans can come out here, and have a great time, have the kitchen all ready, so you know, fill their bellies up and all that kind of stuff, and just create a good time for everyone on and off the track. That's awesome. That's the proper attitude to have. Uh, it's going to be incredible to see everything on May the 11th, night number one. How are you set up for staff? Of course, everything brand new, including the ownership of the track here just in the last few days. Uh, so you haven't had a lot of time. But how is it looking for staff? If someone's looking for a job, are you hiring and do you need anybody specific? Uh, if you are looking to volunteer or uh, looking for uh, to be hired, uh, please reach, reach out on uh, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, or through our email or our uh, website. Or you can reach my uh, through my brother, Craig March. His number is on the Facebook page and on our uh, website. Um, but, yeah, we have had a lot of uh, people reaching out. And so far, we have filled a lot of the positions. Obviously, there's still a couple of uh, people along the way. As you know, it takes a lot of people to run a racetrack. But uh, it's, it's one of those things where everything, thankfully, is coming together a lot smoother than you could have, uh, we could have imagined kind of thing. So we should be, we will be ready for May 11th. Uh, it's just, uh, should be right uh, smoother. It should, should be ready a lot smoother than we were expecting. <laughs> <laughs> good, good deal. Let's hit up the social media and the pointers, so to speak, for race fans and people that are interested in looking at that schedule and uh, finding out everything. Whereabouts exactly are you located for uh, is social media? Give us a hit on all those different spots. Uh, Southern Ontario Motor Speedway is the name on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And then our uh, our website is Southern, Amer Mother Southern Ontario Motor Speedway. And then our email is uh, S period O period M period S dash Buxton at hotmail.com. Perfect. So that lays it all out. They can uh, definitely get a hold of you. Uh, and that's going to be key. Uh, how about the family ticket side of things? Do you guys have a family ticket, uh, or is your kids 12 and under free, or have you gone that far to set the rates? Uh, so for right now, I don't want to speak too much on that because that's not my department, but overall, I do know they are working on uh, making certain deals, and like they're making sure uh, kids are free at certain ages and stuff, but I'm not exactly sure on all the 
details, so I can't say too much on that right now. Yeah, there you go. I'm asking the maintenance guy uh, a, a wrong question. I can guarantee that, uh, but that's cool. I know everything's so fresh and new that uh, it's going to take time to build it in, and uh, just uh, congratulations on absolutely everything so far. Uh, you can count on Race Time Radio to uh, definitely get the word out. And uh, we'll be looking in on the competitors. They take a win there. That's a big deal. We truly sp- uh, appreciate you having us on here and your support. And anytime we come on here again, we love you. We know you're a big influence in the racing community. And we definitely love to have you at the track sometime and maybe even take some uh, pictures with some of the big uh, Victory Lane winners. You want to believe? I look forward to that. I gotta jump in the uh, in the holler and rip on down there. That's gonna be a good time. I uh, look forward to it. Will, thanks so much for the time. Congratulations and uh, go get them, man. We'll be uh, getting you back on here to get a progress report just before that green flag goes in the air. Sound good? Sounds awesome. I can't wait. You bet. Say hi to your dad, your brother, and uh, go get them, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. You bet. That is Will March. How about it? Uh, Ontario Motor Speedway. It's going to go. It's going to go full tilt straight ahead. Uh, Another good dirt track to add uh, to the list of places we all need to go visit. Uh, It sounds like they're going to have a good active schedule. See some different maybe classes at the track. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Great news. Love hearing that. Instead of a racetrack you know, not operating. In this case, we got good news. They're going to go full tilt straight ahead. We're going to hit this break. When we come back, we're going to switch the conversation, talk some NASCAR Canada with the guy that has won 18 of those races. We got Kevin Lacroix coming up, driver of the 74 on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Derek Peersmith, driver of the number seven Oscar Super Late model, and you're listening to Race Time Radio. Tonight's Race Time Radio is brought to you by Leaf Racewear. Fuel your passion and confidence at leafracewear.com. We're an essential part of any team. And by Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Canada's biggest sports car racing weekends of the year. For tickets and details, get to CanadianTireMotorsportPark.com. The SXM app is your one-stop destination for everything you love. Uh, Things keep getting bigger and bigger for these two. Everything you missed. You two were so funny together on the Oscars the other night. An exclusive podcast, video, and on-demand access to your favorite stations. Hear your favorite team from the car, from your home, or on the go. Put it between his legs! All with the SXM app. A free download now from the Google Play or Apple App Store today. Tonight's Race Time Radio is brought to you by GSR Parts. Sprint car specialists with chassis, engines for dirt or asphalt cars. From wings to springs, GSR's got you covered. Also by Quick Quick Fire Starters, the world's best fire starter. There are thousands of parts and pieces that go into today's race cars. GSR Parts has what you need, and they ship coast to coast in Canada. GSR Parts specializes in dirt sprint car chassis, modifieds, and so much more. Whether you race dirt or asphalt, road course, or in a straight line, GSR Parts has the parts you need to get you back on track and in victory lane. Visit them on Facebook at GSR Parts. Rev TV, your motorsports and automotive destination. Watch live races from around the world and right here at home from two wheels to four and so much more. Rev TV is your source for motorsports. Rev TV features exclusive race series, up-to-date news coverage, documentaries, how-to programs, and adrenaline-filled lifestyle programs 24-7. Go green with Rev TV. Contact your TV provider to order. Tonight's Race Time Radio is fueled by AP Race Fuels, the worldwide leader in race fuel technology. Quick Quick Fire Starters, the world's best fire starter. There's nothing like sitting around the fire, is there? 
Lots of life's biggest moments and big challenges get solved right around the fire pit, including many family magic moments. The best way to ensure that fire goes each and every time is to use a Quick Quick Fire Starter. For over 30 years, Quick Quick Fire Starters have been made right here in Canada. I'll never forget when my son was young, thunder was rolling in the distance. Oh, Dad, what was that? Well, that's just the angels falling in heaven. <laughs> Dad, what was that? That's what happens when you pull Grandpa's finger. Quick Quick Fire Starters, <laughs> the world's best fire starter. <laughs> Your weekly fix of newsmakers and newsbreakers is found right here. We call it Race Time Radio. With your host, Joe Chisholm. And welcome back, one and all, to Race Time Radio, all live tonight from the Race Time Radio studio. Hey, if you're on YouTube, following us along on YouTube, uh, the show is live every Sunday from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern. You can always get it live on YouTube. Uh, please do us a favor and hit that subscribe. Uh, it's growing, and it's growing rapidly, and we much appreciate it. Of course, you can watch the show every Tuesday night from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern right across this big, beautiful country on Rev TV Canada. If you haven't got your subscription yet to Rev TV, what are you waiting for? Uh, they've got the programming you want, and as a motorsports fan, you cannot top what Rev TV puts in front of us each and every day on that channel. Uh, check them out. Subscribe. They are available on every single provider across Canada. Uh, so uh, you want to have Rev TV? They've got some incredible programming, uh, some great short track races. It all comes up on Rev TV Canada. And we want to welcome all of you for tuning in right now. The NASCAR Canada Series is our national tour, and our next guest plays a key role in every single NASCAR race that hits the racetrack, and he has for the last 100 races. He drives the number 74. His name is Kevin Lacroix, and he joins us right now. Kev, how you doing, buddy? I'm very good. You? Doing fantastic, my friend. How is the 74 car coming along? Have you been cracking the whip and getting Donnie uh, motivated to get those things ready to fly? Well, first uh, first of all, Don, Donnie is not with us anymore. Uh, we, we got a new crew chief, so uh, and we're, we'll be running a two-car team this year and sometimes uh, three cars, so uh, three drivers. But uh, yeah, so we, we've been working really hard uh, during the off-season to prepare all the cars for everyone. Kevin, you shocked me. I didn't know that. I am so sorry to uh, be hitting that. When did Donnie go? Is this this is new for 24, right? He has been with you a long time, wasn't he? Yeah, he was from 2016 to 2023. So uh, it just happened uh, this uh, this winter uh, that uh, we 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 went to a new direction. Um, we needed, uh, you know, we 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 plan on going for a multi car team. Uh, for quite a bit and now uh, we we've moved forward and we needed uh, people uh, uh full time in the shop and uh, unfortunately Donny lives in Ontario so it's a little bit of a headache for him and you know so we we found a, a group of pe of people in Quebec that are going to to run the team and uh, yeah we have a new crew chief too so yeah you got to love it plans change right things change and uh, everything moves along you have 18 wins in Canada's toughest national tour. Uh, that's that's huge, my friend. To get 18 wins in this series is a real tough task to do, and you've managed to do it. Uh, do you have a favorite track, Kevin? Do you got one that you look forward to each and every year? Because you're, I think you've won on all of them, other than, you know, like Riverside is coming back up. It hasn't been on the schedule for a few years. Uh, Eastbound was new a couple of years ago. Uh, but the tracks that have been, you know, those solid ones that have been there each and every year, I think you've won on all of them. Well, I would say uh, more on road courses. So uh, every time they, they had uh, one road course on the schedule, I'm happy. When, every time they take one off, I'm I'm very sad. So like we, 
for this year in 2024, we were going from five uh, road courses to, to four. So that hurt, that hurt me a little bit. Uh, I've won uh, nearly 50% of all my road courses. Uh, but uh, on ovals, I've, uh, I've had only two wins on ovals. So we're always pretty quick, always in, you know, top, top five. But uh, like the, the little edge that I need to win, like uh, on road courses, maybe I don't, I don't have the, the experience uh, on oval. I'm a road course driver and, and you know, uh, at my age, I, you know, sometimes you, you stop learning. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe that's what happens with me. But uh, no, so we're we're good on ovals. But uh, yeah, looking forward to road course. But if there's anybody that can get the job done, it's you. I've watched you for a lot of races. And uh, I, I look at you the same way I look at L.P. Dumoulin. Uh, you know, L.P. comes in as a road course guy. Uh, I, I was there the first oval track race that he ran. And got his comments after. I said, what did you think of that? He goes, I'm dizzy. I'm dizzy. I like turning left and right. He said, but I know this is part of the deal. I got to get better at it. And sure enough, L.P. Dumoulin now is as good on an oval as he is on a road course. And Kevin, I know you. You are as good on an oval. You maybe don't give yourself enough credit because the oval tracks, uh, you, you shine on them. You get to places like Chaudière. You get to places... Uh, you know, the, 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 the half mile, and now Mono Me at the end of the year. Have you got laps on a Mono Me? If I got what, laps on what? Uh, do you have laps on Mono Me, like uh, in ACT or anything oh, like that? No, no, no. Okay, uh, no, I don't have any. I've never been there in, before. So, uh, But li like you say, you know, I run good on ovals. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, sometimes just like on road course, uh, you know, like – most of my wins, I, I I rarely have the fastest lap time in a race, but uh, you know I'm able when it counts in the final few laps to to do the difference on road course, and maybe that's what I'm missing on ovals. You know, I, you know it, it's one thing to to have the speed; it's another thing to win. And uh, and uh, on ovals, it's a little bit more difficult for me to to find the the extra edge at the end. But uh, you know. Uh, uh, we're go we're better on longer ovals. Uh, not that we have big ovals, but uh, like we're better on maybe like Mon and Mangi we're will be will be good because it's a long longer track than Chaudière. So I'm looking forward to that for an end of the season. So, uh, but uh, yeah, it's one of those ovals that we're not too bad normally. And uh, but you know everything can change. We have a different crew chief now. So you know a, maybe I'll start winning a lot of ovals and start and start losing on the road courses. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You don't, right? You don't know. Uh, it all comes down to strategy. When to come in, when to pick up that rubber. Uh, you can't get tires and fuel at the same time. So it's a constant struggle uh, when you're in one of these races. And it can play a crucial role, right? If you come in too early and get your tires and have to make up the track position, now you're going to burn up the tires you just got or the weight. And uh, if you don't get a yellow, now you're really screwed, right? Like you can't get tires uh, and do a live green flag pit stuff because you'd lose so much time. It's all strategy when you look at it. But you have to have a driver that doesn't get rattled in the car. He has to stay focused. Yeah, you're going to lose spots, but you make them back up. And Kevin Lacroix, there is not anybody in that field that I've seen that can make up positions like you can. I've seen you go uh, into the pits as a leader, come back out, something will happen, a gun will jam, something will take place, and you roll back out on the track 15th, 17th, and you know, away you go. You start picking them off again. Uh, you're really good. You must stay calm in the car. Is it the spotter that keeps you mellow or is that something that's within you no i think i always stay very calm and we even when we're racing uh, on the radio we do a lot of uh you know we trash talking not trash talking <laughs> but they're saying stupid stuff like jokes and joking around on the radio so we like uh, i like keeping the atmosphere very very calm and, and funny so uh, i think that that plays a role uh, not being too stressed in a race and uh, yeah, just like uh, many of my wins in uh, CTMP, uh, like with 10 laps to go, I find myself like P15. And it's like, oh, it's it's kind of, it's time to move forward now, you know? But, uh, you know, at the end, the last few laps, I'm always there. So 
And I like to to move uh, through traffic and uh, and uh, you know, like I said earlier on road courses, when uh, uh, when there's uh, you get at the end of the race and uh, it starts to to count a little bit more, uh, I'm I think I I'm able to stay calm and be fast. Yeah, and go for it. Speaking of uh, CTMP, that is going to be the site for race number one this year. You got to be just going, okay, bring it on. I can't wait to get there. Will you go out and do any preseason testing, Kevin, before we get to Victoria Fest? Well, uh, yeah, for sure. We uh, I did some testing at ICAR in Mirabelle uh, last week, and we're going to CTMP, um, I think, May 2nd or 3rd. And we'll have two tests at CTMP before the race. So, uh, yeah, we're, like I said, we, we have brand new uh, equipment, uh, new people in the team. So we, we have to, to get ready. And uh, for sure, uh, you know, we have uh, a lot of work to do still. So two tests at CTMP. We are with Kevin Lacroix. He is a NASCAR Canada driver, driver of the 74, 18 wins, 100 starts. Uh, what do we got? 59 top five finishes, 76 top tens, and he's pretty good at getting the pole, too. He's got 13 of them in his career for NASCAR Canada. Kevin, uh, when you look at that track, uh, CTMP, uh, does it matter where you qualify? Because it's such a long race, or it seems to be. Does qualifying play a big, big role? I know on the short track, if you got track position, it's paramount. You need it. Whereas at the uh, road course, it doesn't seem to be as much. Do you guys put big effort into qualifying when you're at CTMP? No, not really. For sure, uh, it's nice. Uh, it's nice to qualify for. So we, so every time you, uh, maybe I give it, you know, my hundred percent and try to get the pole. But if I, if it doesn't happen, it's not too big of a deal. I think uh, uh, pit stop is more uh, is more important. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, we, you know, with it, it happens very often that with uh, 10, 12 laps to go, I find myself P15 and, you know, I need to make up ground. So uh, it happens every every race. Everybody has a different strategy and they always uh, come down to the last few laps. Uh, so no matter where you, you start, uh, you know, I think pit stop strategies are, are yeah, you, you get in the mix sometime and, uh, you know, that's more important. You've got a beautiful looking race car each and every time you hit that racetrack. How's the sponsorship looking for 2024? Is the panels all filled up? Are you good to go there? Yeah, well, we're we're all filled up for the next seven years, so <laughs> so that's a that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, we have the same uh, same uh, same sponsor as last year, uh, Napa Auto Parts, um, and we got also Gates. Uh, uh, we got uh, Valvoline, the lubricant. So uh, you know. They're big, uh, big uh, partners and good partners that are are excited to get involved in racing and bringing people, and we have a lot of fun and party together. Well, everybody likes to sponsor a winner, and that's what they get when they get the 74 Kevin Lacroix. At least they know for sure you're going to give them 110% every lap, and chances are, if you're on the road course, you got a really good shot at the victory at the end, and that's the cool part. Uh, race team wise, you got a new crew chief. How about the rest of the team? Are you looking for anybody or are you all ready to go that way? Well, uh, yeah, we, uh, we're pretty set up there right now. Uh, uh, most of the crew we had last year, except uh, the crew chief, it's hard to bring two crew chief on a car. So, uh, most of the people we had last year are still there. Uh, we got a new crew chief and, uh, and the, the second car we're having is a, a driver that, uh, we, we're not all okay to announce yet because he didn't ma uh, make announcement himself. But uh, he's bringing uh, his uh, mechanics, uh, his help too on on his side. You know, his uh, his crews. So pretty uh, much uh, all set up. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the the key part was to hire two uh, two new people full time in the shop, and that's uh, that's what we did. And that's already done. Oh man, I can't wait to find out who you're teamed up with. Now you've got me interested. Uh, I, I can't wait to find out. And I'm sure we will soon, right? Uh, yeah, it's pretty set up for uh, maybe like uh, one week or something. I can't remember the date exactly, but uh, in about a week. And uh, I'm excited too to, uh, you know, that everybody knows and to see it on track. Uh, 
and it's uh, it's gonna be fun to have a driver with the same equipment as me, and uh, a driver with better equipment than he had in the past, and uh, a driver that can prove he can win just as much, maybe more, maybe less. We'll see, just as much as me. So he he wins too. So we'll be a very exciting team that we'll have on track. Uh, we'll have a shot at the win every every races. How about social media? Are you big on social media? If so, how can fans follow you along, Kev? Well, I have a Facebook page uh, with my name, Kevin Lacroix, but uh, other than that, no, I'm pretty quiet. Uh, so I have a regular job too. So, you know, I keep myself busy away of the racetrack and uh, from social medias. Well, let the results speak for themselves. When you get the win, you get the publicity too, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> awesome stuff. Kevin, we've enjoyed the time tonight. Uh, good luck. I know I'm going to be at a couple of races this year. I look forward to checking in with you and uh, seeing how everything's going, my man. All right. See you. Thank you. You bet. That's Kevin Lacroix, driver of the 74. Watch for him at CTMP. There is a lot of really good teams there. But Kevin Lacroix, man, I'll tell you, this guy knows how to get it done. He has a lot of times at that particular speedway. It's going to be very interesting to see how it all shakes out. We're going to hit our final break. And when we come back, I'm going to have Tony Stevens, Pit Row TV, all live with us on Race Time Radio. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Derek Peterson, driver of the number seven Oscar Super Late Model, and you're listening to Race Time Radio. Tonight's Race Time Radio is brought to you by... GSR Parts, sprint car specialists with chassis, engines for dirt or asphalt cars. From wings to springs, GSR's got you covered. Also by Quick Quick Fire Starters, the world's best fire starter. So, how's that rebuild going? Have you got that race car ready to go yet? You still looking for parts? Have you called GSR Parts yet? You want to save some money, right? So you can buy the stuff you need throughout the course of the year. GSR Parts carries all the big name brands, along with some parts that are manufactured right on site. Centrally located in Ontario, you can stop by and pick up the parts you need, or they'll ship them nationwide. Whether you race dirt or asphalt, they even carry parts for road course cars. 226. 583-8001 and keep an eye on GSR Parts Facebook page. For over 30 years, Quick Quick Fire Starters have fueled the sport on and off the track, making lighting your campfire as easy as one, two, three. There's no need for kindling or paper. Just pop your Quick Quick Fire Starter in the pit, add your wood, and presto, you're a pro. Quick Quick Fire Starters, no harmful chemicals, and guarantee to light your fire every time. Quick Quick Fire Starters, the world's best fire starter. Even though Napa is a nationally known name, nearly all of our stores are built from the ground up by local owners and families. People you might call neighbors will be here, there, and everywhere. Doing what neighbors do to keep their communities moving forward. You stop by a Napa Auto Parts store, you can count on Napa know-how. Tonight's Race Time Radio is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts Stores, Port Hawkesbury, New Glasgow, and Indy Gaddish, Nova Scotia. I want my if you're looking for miles per gallon, you're definitely at the wrong place. Maybe a few channels up or a few channels down, you'll find it. But this is Race Time Radio. And now, back with your host, Joe Chisholm. And welcome back to Race Time Radio. So, so glad you could tune in tonight on Rev TV Canada. Uh, much appreciated. Now, let's talk, shall we, with a guest. Our next guest is a perfect person to talk about live streaming of races on television. Uh, he has done it for a long time. I don't know how many years, but we're going to find out. Uh, to me, Tony Stevens is Pit Row TV, 
and that is Row R O W, not Road Pit Row TV. Uh, and I've been tuned into Pit Row TV for a lot of years. And when it comes time for live streaming of races, everything seems to be becoming more complex. There is more selection. You don't know where to turn. Uh, I get asked all the time in this game, how do I watch this guy's race? How do I watch that race? And I'll tell you, even a guy like me that's entrenched in this industry has a hard time answering some of the questions that I get. So I thought, you know what? Tony Stevens would be a perfect guy to get on at this time of the year. All the races are fired off now. Uh, up here in Canada, we still have a few more weeks. But uh, down south, everything is rocking and rolling. And I know Tony Stevens has his eye on absolutely everything down there. Uh, and he is one of those huge content providers. And he joins us now all live tonight. What's going on, Tony? How you doing, bud? I'm doing pretty good. I'm eating my lunch right now. Actually, I'm at, a, a, ironically, a large broadcasting trade show trying to figure out some more of those tips and tricks. And I try to stay on the cutting edge of what we can do to bring folks racing and, and do it in a way they enjoy and make sure they're entertained. Tony, it, uh, when you look back a couple of years ago, there was only a couple of content providers. You have been really at the cutting edge of it since when it really started at their speedways. You must find a huge difference in this game. Oh, it's nuts. It's, I, I, I've, tell, I've told the story a lot, it feels like, in the last six months. But I remember when we started out, and it was we had a little encoder box about the size of you know, a couple credit cards stacked together is what it felt like. Maybe actually probably close to about a hockey puck size, truthfully, with thickness and all. So I remember we had that, a mixing board, and a camera, and that's all we had. We thought we were hot stuff, right? And we all dreamt of the days that we could, oh, it'd be nice to have all these different angles, these different replays, these cool graphics. And lo and behold, here we are. I mean, we literally just got a, a brand new trailer for our broadcast here about four or five weeks ago. And we haven't quite finished building it out yet, but we're, we're going to have it finished here soon. It actually has to be on the road at the end of the month for its first event. And uh, it's amazing. I sat, I sat there in that trailer and I looked at it and that thing is quote unquote future proof within reason. But it's like, man, when did we get to just a stream turned into this massive production? But it comes from support of our viewers and our subscribers and what they like to see and telling us what they want to see and us trying to meet that challenge of giving them more of what they want to see and how they want to see it. And, and it's just been an ever evolving thing. And it's been really fun. Well, and it's a ton of investment, too. We can't forget about that. I know in the radio world, I had a dream some 10, 12 years ago of creating a live broadcast crew that could go to races, broadcast the race flag to flag, do it online, do it on Sirius XM or wherever, and get the information out to the race fans. Uh, and it does. It evolves into something greater and greater. And it's us. We're the guys to blame for it because we're listening back to what we do. And we go, hmm, it would be cool if we could add this and we figure out a way to do it. Now, it may cost us five or ten grand to add this, but you and I are the same kind of uh, cut from the same cloth. We want it to be better each and every time. And Tony Stevens, you do that. Uh, when I watch your broadcast versus some of the other broadcasts, uh, it's the difference between what we do on Race Time Radio and a couple of guys sitting in their basement on a laptop. It is like, how can we compete against this? Those guys have got, I don't know, $150 invested in a laptop, and I've got probably, I don't know, $200,000 in electronics in a studio. Uh, but we're on the same online presence. There is a big difference is what I'm getting at. And Pit Row TV does an amazing job. When you watch a Pit Row TV broadcast, that is similar and equiv equivalent to me as watching a Fox broadcast because you've got that much stuff coming at the race fan. It's got to be daunting. It really is, and I appreciate the compliments. That's our, that's our goal is to make it as close to network as it can because, quite frankly, the, the viewer, that's what they expect, right? That's what they're used to seeing on Sunday, and in their mind, we should all be able to do that, right? Never mind the millions they have invested, right? So we try to mimic that and obviously put our own spin on it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it is very daunting. I mean, you know, take, for instance, um, 
we'll use the Winchester 400 last year. And, you know, a lot of this has, has come to a new partnership we have as well with TrackTV.com and Bob Sargent's organization. We're tied in with that. Um, so we'll be handling a lot of the stuff on the back end of that in addition to what we do on pit row. But, like, we did the Winchester 400 last year. That's a Sunday race. We got to Winchester on Tuesday just to give folks an idea. And, and we had to actually go do some upgrades to the facility as far as, okay, oh, this conduit is, is totally junk. We've got to go replace it and get all this stuff done. And now we've got to test all this stuff. And, you know, I always say we've just never done it. I would love to have a, a video series or a documentary about what our average race weekend looks like mm -hmm. on a show of that magnitude. Not because I think it, what we do is anything special, but I, I think it's because the average race fan doesn't understand what actually goes into it, just like they for years didn't understand what actually it took to get a, a winning race car to the racetrack, right? And I think it's kind of that same deal, and that's what I tell my guys. Racers are one in the shop. We do our homework during the week, not at the racetrack, and we, we show up at the racetrack and tweak it or figure out if it's going to work at all or whatever, but we do our work in the shop just as a race team does. And by doing that homework, it allows us to do really cool things on broadcast that folks like you enjoy. Well, and when you see a series uh, taking leaps and bounds, you know, there's a lot that goes into that series operation, whether it be race team or the sanctioning body doing the right things. But all that can go for naught if they get the wrong broadcast company to put their product out there. It can look like uh, like a two bit show. Uh, or you can get the right broadcast, and it can make it look spectacular. And that's what I love about Pit Row TV. You do that, and I urge, and I have for years, urged race fans to check out Pit Row TV and subscribe to it. It is worth the subscription. And today, the market is becoming more fragmented all the time. It's like the music industry, right? Uh <laughs> It's all over the place. Before, there used to be, I don't know, rock, country, uh, opera, I don't know, uh, like a handful of different genres. And now today, there's like 150 of them. Good luck trying to find what you want to listen to. Uh, it's The same can be true with live streaming of races. We have flow racing, and we have, uh, you know, Racing America. We have all these different streaming networks, but you can't be fooled by, oh, it's got a big title, it's going to be a good broadcast, because that isn't always the case. A lot of times, they're taking local stuff and regurgitating it and putting it out online, and it's not quite fair to guys that are doing it right. Yeah, and we try to work with all of our crews as well. I mean, for instance, we had the Alive for Five series at Dells Raceway Park yesterday, and holy cow, that was a heck of a race. And, and, and that crew wasn't quite what we have for, like, say, an ASA National Tour race. But those guys go to those races, and they did a great job with the four people they had on site um, to try to, to drum these shows up and make them more than just a camera at a racetrack, right? We try to work with our crews to make sure they understand what's going on. We try to make sure the equipment is uniform across the board. There's a lot of little things that we do that I know a lot of folks don't necessarily do, and that's just the way that we chose to do it because I am a big believer that the quality matters. Kind of like you said, you can, you can take a great series and have a terrible broadcast platform, and it doesn't doesn't translate as well you can have a, an average series have a great broadcast platform and it elevates it and i like to feel like that, that what we do we do very well and that whoever we do work with um obviously that's what we are able to do is help elevate their brand because ultimately the broadcast is an extension of that sanctioning body's brand right whether it's indycar nascar nhra asa's national tour or whatever the case is it's an extension of their brand right and we've been very fortunate with, you know, to be able to partner with folks like U.S. Legend Cars for that same reason. Obviously, we mentioned the ASA National Tour and, you know, a lot of folks we've worked with in the past and, and look, look forward to working with in the future, too, to try to elevate those things. And uh, the details matter. That's ultimately what it is. And we're race fans. We try to make sure that what you're watching is what we, we would want to watch as well. Well, and you're going to pay for something. Let's make sure we get our money's worth. And they do with Pit Row. Uh, who are you? Because uh, I know your broadcast, I've seen some of your broadcast end up on Rev TV Canada. Uh, they do appear in a lot of different locations after the fact. But who do you specifically work with, Tony? Uh, I know Speed Sport oh is one. Uh, like Ralph Shaheen uh, spoke with Ralph at the, uh, at the PRI show. And he was so excited this year, and rightfully so. He's got like 400 races that are going to be coming up. 
on Speed Sport. It's amazing, and I know you are a content provider with Rel. Yeah, we our, our back end is powered by Speed Sport TV, so we are tied in with that whole platform. In fact, our the, the entire Speed Sport TV platform, I probably work a little closer with them than maybe some of the other affiliates do because I've been there. Literally, if you look in the, on the platform, we literally were broadcast number one. So we've been tied in from day one. Uh, but as a platform, we do like 3,000 plus events on a given year. That's not what Pit Row does, but it's what Speed Sport does. But you know, nonetheless, yeah, there's a lot of stuff tied in. So we do work with Speed Sport and their new fast channel that they have is starting to launch, which is called Speed Sport One. You can check it out on Sling and a bunch of other platforms. It's free to watch. So a lot of our stuff's ended up there. Uh, we talk about the ASA National Tour. Their broadcasts end up on MAV TV. Um, so we, we are doing that. There have been other things that have been picked up, as you said, from Rev TV in the past and, and just a bunch of different folks. Obviously, the primary place it goes is to Pit Road TV or to any of our other affiliates that we have that, that we're tied in with, like U.S. Legend Cars TV or Track TV. Um, but that's those are our primary places. But, yeah, they end up everywhere. We've had them you know, pop in places. People have approached us about distributing them, and we go, okay, what's – What's the deal look like? And they say, here's what we want to do. And I say, okay. And it's good for the series. It's good for everybody that folks want this content. It makes them look good. It puts them in front of more eyeballs. I mean, it's good for everybody. And uh, ultimately, that's, that's what it's all about. But if we didn't have a good, solid, strong subscriber base that supports what we do, we would not be able to do that. So right. without those folks, we're unable to, to do those things. And on top of that, we're unable to give back to the tracks of the series if they don't subscribe. So we're so appreciative of the folks that do because it allows us to give back to the tracks and to the drivers and the series and then allow them to get more exposure in different places by having the programs that we do that folks do want to pick up. Yeah, exactly. Well said. Well said. Uh, taking a look at Pit Road TV, uh, Liberty Speedway coming up April the 20th, uh, and it continues on from there. Hey, I can't get down far enough in the schedule but are you going back to Erie by chance? That 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 was always a good one. Oh, I don't even I, I don't even what know where it? where the heck we're going half not, the time not this the year. Magic, I, I literally the... just spoke with a, a a provider, I don't know, an hour ago about scheduling because it's got to the point that scheduling all of our staff is a headache because I can't keep it straight, right? So there's a lot of places we're going and there's a lot of places we're not going. I don't remember. So I know we're going to Nashville next weekend for the U.S. Legend Cars Spring Nationals. Uh, yeah, Liberty Raceway Park is next weekend for the World Karting Association Dirt Series. And after that, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I know it's actually I think we go to Pensacola and Mobile for track TV uh, the weekend after that. And I have, I think, one or two other shows on Pit Row. And then we get into May and I'm totally lost. Yeah. So yeah. that kind of gives you an idea of where I'm at. Oh, well, and that's the beauty of being able to go on to the site. You can take a look and, uh, you know, plan it all out. But. I do urge everybody, if you're a short track race fan, I don't care if you're in Canada, in the U.S., or where you are, Pit Row TV is one that you need to really cue into and check it out. This guy, Tony Stevens, is the guy flying it. And trust me when I say, you will enjoy the broadcast. Tony, this has been great catching up with you, man. We have to do this a little more often, uh, but you have fun in Vegas. Uh, that's, a, that's a good show you're at. We will try. It's fun. There's a lot of stuff we learn every time we come here. And, uh, again, try to apply to the broadcast and make sure that everybody's able to take advantage of it. But, yeah, as you said, check us out on the website, pitrow.tv, P-I-T-R-O-W.tv. We're also on social. Pick your favorite platform. We're on there, whether it's Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. I think I had them all, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, we're on pretty much all of them. So look us up. We try to have content on all of them and, and try to interact with our fans. But we have got a boatload of stuff coming up this season. And uh, we are really looking forward to it. Well, and also the guy that has really uh, taught Tim Terry from Tim's Corner uh, pretty well everything Tim has done. Uh, he has uh, been doing it through Tony. So uh, you do an awesome job, even up here in Canada, buddy. Well, I appreciate it. Tim's taking on a life of his own, and he's taken the lessons we've taught him, done a really good job. And uh, he doesn't have to call me very often anymore. He used to. So so he's really blossomed and really started his own thing there at Tim's Corner.tv. And, Really glad to see it because there's a lot of great racing in that part of the country up there as well. Well, I'm just going to stick to the two-hour update, uh, my little corner of this world. But, uh, Tony, we much appreciate it. Go get them, man, and uh, look forward to the next broadcast on Pit Road TV. Thanks so much for the we time tonight. look forward tonight. to it, too. Thanks for having us on, Joe. You betcha. Tony Stevens, uh, great, great, great guy, does a great job. And what more could you ask for, right, uh, when you buy something? 
you really like getting your money's worth, and you definitely get your money's worth with these guys. And, oh, by the way, you like the ASA Stars Tour as much as we do? Those are the guys right there. Tony Stevens and his guys are the ones that are putting it all together and putting it out, and uh, that makes it kind of why we enjoy it, right? Uh, and look at the, the growth that that series has been under, uh, and it's just getting started. Uh, it's going to be amazing, but that is going to do it for us tonight on Race Time Radio. I want to thank you all for tuning in all live on Race Time Radio, uh, and don't forget to like us on that uh, YouTube channel. We'd much appreciate it. Got to thank Sue here in the Race Time Radio studio for hooking us up and getting us uh, all gathered up, all the graphics. That's all Susie Q. And uh, got to thank Corey Mears. Say thanks for the sweater, buddy. It's kept me warm down here. Uh, as the temperature goes up, I'll be shedding the sweater, but uh, definitely needed it tonight in the Race Time Radio studio. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week, all live from the Race Time Radio studio. Have a good one, everybody. Uh, have a good, safe week, and uh, we will definitely be with you next Sunday at 5. Thanks for listening to Race Time Radio. Visit us on the web at www.racetimeradio.com. We hope you'll join us again next time for more Race Time Radio. Come on now, dig, dig, dig. Exclusively on your home for the hardcore race fan.